I'll call the meeting to order. And if everyone could please rise, the Honorable Brandon McCullough is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you, Council Member McCullough. Good evening and welcome to the August 22nd, 2022 study session of the Livonia City Council. This meeting sets the agenda for the 1950th regular meeting, which is a voting meeting to take place on September 7th, 2022. Um, we do not have council, we do not have council um, Vice President Laura Toy with us this evening. She is um, under the weather and Jim Jolly is President Jolly is at a previously uh, scheduled engagement that he was not able commitment that he was not able to rearrange to be here this evening and we have council member Donovic who's um, been called back to some active duty uh, present via zoom which is permitted under state law I do not have any announcements, but at this time we will go to audience communication. If there's anyone in the audience who would like to speak on any item not on this evening's agenda, now is an opportunity to do so. All right, seeing none, we will move ahead. Council, do you have any announcements that you'd like to make prior to commencement of our agenda? All right, seeing none, we'll proceed with this evening's agenda. This meeting is a study meeting. There will be no votes taken. The council members will, however, however, off, offer either one resolution or combination of resolutions for each item. Resolutions may include an approving, denying, or referring an item to committee or a city department for its report and recommendation. A resolution of no further action may also be offered. There are some items that will simply be received and filed for the information of the city council. Please note that all of the items on tonight's agenda will move on to the regular meeting of Wednesday, September 7th, where they will officially be voted on. And just a note, Monday, September 5th is Labor Day, so as is our uh, practice when a meeting, a Monday meeting, a meeting that would normally be on Monday falls on a holiday, we move the meeting to a Wednesday evening generally. If you would like to participate in any of the items that are on this evening's agenda, Please approach the podium on one of the podiums on either side of the room when the item is called and you'll be recognized at the appropriate time. Generally, the petitioner, whether that is the city or a private entity, will make remarks and initial, uh, initial presentation followed by remarks from those in the audience and city council. So please come to the podium when the item is called and when, when it's your turn, I will acknowledge you and, and ask you to come forward and you will Please state your name and address for the record that your remarks may be properly attributed to you in the minutes for the meeting. It will also let the council and those watching um, on TV or via streaming know who you are. So with that, we move to our new business portion of the agenda, beginning with item number one. This is a block party. Uh, the petitioner uh, offered by Lewis and Kimberly Palmer to be held Saturday, September 10th, 2022 from 2 to 10 p.m. on Wadsworth Avenue from Bo Boston Post West until it dead ends. Is the petitioner here this evening? Yes. All right. Please come to the podium. And if only one of you is going to speak, only one of you needs to introduce yourself. But if both want to speak, that's fine, too. So. Okay. Hello. Uh, my name is Kimberly Palmer. My address is 11866. Boston Post Street, Livonia, Michigan. And my name is Lewis Palmer, um, 11866 Boston Post Street, Livonia, Michigan. All right, and is this an annual, is this an annual block party or is this a new event for your subdivision or neighborhood? It was new yeah. last year. Okay. And uh, it went over so well, we, everyone clamored for us to do it again this year, so. Yep. That's what we're here to do, and uh, we tried to keep it on the same weekend, so um, it seemed to work out really well. Fantastic. Council. Uh, Council Member McCullough. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd be happy to offer an approving on consent if there are no objections. You guys look like you had a blast the last time and look like this one's even going to be better, so I'm not going to stand in your way. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And are you offering that for consent? Yes. Okay. So it's going out of consent, which means you don't need to come back to the next meeting because it's non-controversial and we put all the consent agenda items together and they're voted on as one item. Awesome. So you're all set. So uh, that's it. 
So thank you. And enjoy your party, and thank you for being engaged and uh, active citizens who clearly work for the betterment and the uh, joy and uh, you know just great neighborhood that that you live in. And I'm sure you are appreciated by all of your neighbors. So thank you very much. It's good okay. to get to know your neighbors. It certainly is. And. You are all invited. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, we'd love to have you come. Thank that's, you. That's one of the things that makes Livonia a great city to live in. Yep. It is. Is the community. It yes. is. Yes, it's a beautiful, it's beautiful. Well, thank you. And I have to tell you, I will be uh, at Michigan State watching my son in the marching band, and so I'm not allowed to be anywhere else on uh, <laughs> on game days when we're home so yes. understand that i'm a but woman yes. I, so. hopefully hopefully, <laughs> yeah. hopefully some so, of uh, some of my colleagues will be able yeah, to hopefully attend. we'll see you all right thank you thank you thank you item number two is a block party this is uh from dina andre and i hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly and if i'm not please correct me when you come to the podium to be held sunday september 25th 2022 from 2 to 8 p.m at the corners of arthur leon and elmira streets north to the corner of Elmira and Yale Streets. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Kuhn. Okay. I'm at 35666 Elmira Street okay. in Livonia, Michigan. I'm here on behalf of Dina. I also do not know how to pronounce her last okay. name, so, <laughs> so you're not alone there. <laughs> and is this an annual or is this a first time? This is the first time we are extending it to the block. Okay. Historically, she's had it at her house for just the surrounding okay. houses, um, but we've decided this year we'd like to extend it to our full block. Right, council? Madam President. Uh, council Member Barr. I'll offer this for uh, approving for consent if there's no objection. I, I just have a quick question for yeah. you real quick, um, and not to put you on the spot, but I, I'm pretty familiar with that area. I used to live right on with Chicago there at Arthur and uh, where Minton come together. And I'm, I'm wondering, are you having it on the, on the main road there right in front of the old Garfield School? Is that the plan or is it from Garfield School north on Arthur there? Because I know that's a very high traffic area coming down Parkdale. Not in front of the school. Um, where Arthur kind of curves into Elmira, that's where we intend to block it off. Okay, so it's so at the, past. It's, it's north of Parkdale? Yes. And, okay, so it starts at Elmira and then runs north along? Yes. Um, okay, along Leon, is it? Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to clarify be that that's because question. that's a very high traffic area and I was more concerned for people's safety. Is that gonna, how is that gonna be blocked off at what's your plan? At, is it uh, bringing in city? The city barricades. So uh, I guess that was part of a question that Dina and myself had. So when we block it off or we kind of follow this, do we have to block the entirety of the block where we're having the party or can we just block within a few areas of some houses? You're generally, and um, we have the city attorney here and we also have our uh, one of our fine police captains here. Um, I believe it's up to your discretion. You need permission if it's a main road, right? Okay. But if it is a road within a subdivision, if you will, um, I, I believe that generally we, we leave it to the discretion of the people holding the party. And you can get the barriers from um, DPW. Is that right. still correct, Mr. Rushlow? Okay. And um, I just want to thank Council Member Barr and all, or Morgan in all seriousness for asking those questions. He was a Livonia police officer for 25 years. So whenever someone comes here and talks about what they're doing at any particular block in the city, he, he, he knows exactly where they're talking about. So um, good questions and thank you, Mr. Morgan. Thank you. Yeah. It All right. Just, uh, it, may I, please. Madam Chair, the, I just wanted to make sure that uh, if you're going to do that, please uh, block off um, Elmira Street at Leon. Yes. Right there. I would recommend that you do it in its entirety. Make okay. sure that that is closed off. Um, you don't want anybody squeezing by there and driving through your block party. As far as the other end, um, if you're going to just go like 10 houses down, I'm not sure what your plan is. Uh, you may, may want to make sure that that's completely blocked off also. Okay. Okay. Because we don't uh, we don't want any injuries and in that I know that area that people just fly down there. So, okay, good do. luck. Thank you. 
All right, so it's on consent, which means you don't have to come back either. It's, it goes on the consent agenda. It's voted on with a number of other items, so you're all set. And at the next meeting on Wednesday, Wednesday September 7th, we will officially approve it, but you're all set. Understood. Thank you so all much. Right. Thank you. All right, uh, item number three is a block party request from Wafa Denaro to be held on Saturday, October 1st, 2022, from 1 to 8 p.m. on Huff Street between Kingsbury and Ladywood Streets. Good evening. Hi, thanks for having me. So, Wafa Denaro, 15680 Huff Street. Um, I'll, I, I've heard the question, so this is the first time we're having this block party. We have a lot of new families in our neighborhood, and we figured this would be a good way to get everybody in one place to get to know each other. There's a lot of young kids, so we intend on having um, like a food truck, cotton candy, some bounce houses, and some music. So we're, we're excited about it, and hopefully this can, this can become uh, an annual thing. Council Member McCullough. Thank you, Madam Chair. On this one, <clears throat> definitely council should be getting an invite because this one yeah. sounds like it's going to be a good one. Yeah, um, you guys are all welcome to join us. They're all good ones. <laughs> they're all good ones for sure. Not discounting anything, but uh, I have high hopes for this one. Um, I will be happy to offer an approving for consent unless you want to come back to the right. I uh, do not want to come back. Okay. <laughs> I love seeing you guys, but I'd rather uh, stay at football practice and watch my kids. <laughs> yeah. Two meetings in a row. I yeah, I know, know, right? <laughs> yep. All right, well, you know the process, and uh, yep. Waffle, I'll have to check if that's not a Michigan State home game. If I'm invited to, I'm going to stop by because Perfect. I grew up at 37860 Ladywood, which is oh, right yeah. on the corner. I know. Yep, so this is my old stomping grounds. We never had block parties, but we did We did have bike parades and, you know, other things. But uh, had there been block parties, the McIntyre girls would have been there and not ever gotten out of the bounce house probably. Awesome. So, anyway, <laughs> um, this is great. Yeah, well, you guys are all welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right, item number four, a block party to be held on Saturday, October 8th from noon until 9 p.m. on Sherwood between Woodside and Park Lane with a rain date of Sunday, October 9th, 2022, and this is from Lauren Grew. Hi, my name is Eric Grew, 15612 Woodside. Um, Lauren's my wife. Um, this is the second year we've had the block party. Uh, went over really well last year. Everybody had a blast, and we're just continuing it again this year. So plan is to block off Sherwood between Woodside and Park Lane. Okay. Council? Madam Chair? Yes? I uh, looked at the map. Everything looks like it'll work fine. I'll offer improving for consent if there's no Thank objection. Thank you. Council Member Barr? Good with this? I mean, Morgan, sorry. Yep. Sorry. The other Scott. Yep. You good with this one? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, um, it's been offered for consent. So again, you're all set. It will be officially approved on September 7th, but you don't have to come back. And thank you, um, like we've indicated everybody else, for being citizens and neighbors who work to build strong neighborhoods and keep Livonia as a welcoming and fun place for everyone. So thank you very much and have a great party. Thank you. And are we have invited? Good... Sure. Okay. Yeah, because I do not want to miss this one either. Exactly. <laughs> Call. Yeah. All right. Item number five is a request for designation as a nonprofit organization. This comes from Christian A. Lobb uh, from Bator Lobb Attorneys and Counselors at Law on behalf of Life Center Incorporated. Re is required by the state of Michigan to obtain a charitable gaming license to allow a raffle fundraiser in the future. Good evening. Hi. So I don't see our attorney here, but my name is Samantha and I am the program director with Life Center and we are a nonprofit agency and we provide services to individuals with developmentally disabilities and um, we provide staffing assistance in group homes and supportive settings where they live on their own, but require assistance. Um, so we are trying to get a poker license right now to help offset some costs to us, help individuals with dental and things that they can't afford. Um, we have done bingos and poker in the past, but it's been many years, so we need to update our license for that. So that's what we were hoping to get today. Council. Madam Chair? Oh, yes. Or, or did, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, everything seems to be in order here. I'd be happy to offer approval or consent if there's no objection. All right. So, again, your item will be officially voted upon and approved at the September 7th meeting, but you don't need to come back. 
Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm new to this. So after December or September 7th, so I wouldn't be notified or how does that work? Um, you won't be notified. Okay. You, you can just know that on September 7th, you, you might want to tune in and watch the meeting on streaming okay. or read the minutes. Okay. It's very rare that anything is even pulled off consent. It's, okay. it's even rarer for something to be pulled off the consent agenda and then not voted uh, to, to be for approval. Okay. All right. Thank you guys very and much. And if you're paying your attorney, make sure he doesn't charge you for this meeting. I know, right? All right. <laughs> thank you guys. Okay. Thank you. Item number six. This is a request for authorization to waive the sealed bid process and purchase from sole source provider. This comes to us from the Division of Police to replace the police department's firearms training simulator, known as FATS, from budgeted funds. Good evening, Captain Young. Good evening, council members and members of various city departments. Yes, we're requesting the uh, replacement of our current FAST machine that is outdated. Our former firearms training simulator is 18 years old, and the operating system in which it was ran by through Windows XP has ceased to be supported earlier this year, and quite frankly, it's just been used up, and uh, we're in need of a new one. And without the ability to install these updates, the device doesn't work. So we're recommending the purchase of a new firearms training simulator from a company called Vertra Inc. And we're <coughs> requesting a waiver of the city's sealed process based on our research. And this is the only manufacturer for the equipment and software that simulates return fire consequences, which means the officer will know that if they were in a firefight, if they actually <coughs> were hit also. Um, Vertra is the only company that can produce and sell a specifically triggered training cartridge for this taser line products, which we use for our tasers, and that's through Axon. So our training will be with the equipment that we use for this system and not a generic item to simulate equipment that an officer uses. Uh, this is the only company that can produce and sell this, and uh, it's specifically designed and it's affordable for the uh, converts, we'll use our own pistols. We're able to put different barrels in there that shoot basically lasers, and the machine is able to read where those hits would be should we be involved in a shooting situation with this particular training equipment. Uh, the request to purchase, uh, the purchase for this item is $56,280.54, which we're using from budgeted funds. Thank you. Council Member Morgan, I got it right. Yes, I would like to uh, approve this and put this on the consent agenda if uh, All right. there's no objection. I see no objections, so we're good That's on that. Right. And um, I do have a comment, if I may. Mm -hmm. I guess I can give myself permission since I'm the chair tonight to comment. Um, I, as, as many know, anyone who's ever talked to me knows I'm a proud graduate of the Citizens Police Academy as many are tired of hearing me talk about it, but um, I didn't do real well in the simulator. I believe that I killed the innocent person and got myself killed. I believe that is because of the antiquated system. So when, when the new system is there, I would like to be invited back to show that indeed it was not the operator's fault, it was due to the obsolescence. And if, if I may, Councilwoman, um, Please. there's some points with this system as we've explained to you guys when you were in the Citizens Police Academy, but this particular system is the closest thing to real time life or death incidents. And I mean, it re reverts back to muscle memory. And when something of that nature comes into effect, sometimes you're just operating through what you've already learned. So this system won't only save lives, it, it's designed to save our officers' lives, but also the lives of the people that we encounter to where we can de-escalate. I mean, this is vital training for our officers so that they can make the right decision every time. In, in all seriousness, were you done? This I don't is, want to interrupt nope. the captain. I'm good. In all seriousness, th this is a really impressive system, and it was clear a few years ago mm -hmm. um, when we did go through it that it was not state-of-the-art, um, but it, it still got the job done. But these are, and with every new generation, they are more and more realistic, right? Yep. This with, one's actually portable, too. So okay. the room that you were in, yep. we can actually move this into where you guys had your classroom. Okay. We can take it down to the range and put it 
know, if we have something going in one, one space, we can utilize a different area with this system. So excellent, excellent. A lot better technology. Um, I I think um, if if maybe there's a way that we could when you when you get this right. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, share some details about how it's going and uh, oh, absolutely. just be interested to hear. But, but this really is, and, and this is in line with all the training and the investments Livonia makes in not only getting the bad guys, but not getting the good guys. And to your point, de-escalation, mm -hmm. um, using the least force possible, and also in protecting the uh, health and welfare of our, and safety of our off officers. So, absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. All right, um, item number seven, request for authorization to purchase one 2022 Dodge Charger utilizing the state of Michigan bid pricing. This too comes to us from the Division of Police to replace an unrepairable vehicle from budgeted funds. Captain. Yes, uh, back July 14th, uh, one of our newer police vehicles, a Ford Interceptor SUV, was involved in a traffic crash at Five Mile in Merriman, I believe it was, but uh, the vehicle was deemed unrepairable, so Michigan Municipal Risk Management is going to pay that vehicle price of $31,800 back to us and we're looking to purchase a new 2022 Dodge Charger to replace that vehicle uh, from La Fontaine, uh, I guess Ford or Dodge, wherever they're located, but that vehicle is gonna cost $34,273 and the replacement equipment and the outfitting will be covered by MMRMA also. So we're requesting a waiver of the city's sealed bid process based on the fact that uh, the police department's association with the Mich state of Michigan bid system and consortium. So this all falls right into line with that. And basically we're just replacing one vehicle with another. Madam Chair. <coughs> Council Member Morgan. I'll offer an approving for consent any and I should have asked before if there are any council comments or co comments from the audience I forgot to do that no objection to mr. Morgan's approval I just wonder in light of the recent decision I'm not wonder I'm just gonna make a statement in light of the recent decision by Dodge to retire the charger and the challenger um, this might actually go up in value over time there has it least, could so this is an investment by the city right here <laughs> I'm a little bit biased based on my previous job so all right. <laughs> Not if you've ever seen the way we drive. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We are we are all set. And I also just wanted to thank you for including in the packet the information about the disposition yes. and financial uh, financial ramifications okay. of the salvage choice and the MMR McA claim. That helpful. So thank you for Appreciate putting that it. in, Captain. All right. Good night. Thank you. Have stay a good safe. Night. Although you're welcome to stay. Yeah. Thanks. All right, um, <laughs> item number nine is a request to purchase, no, item, we're on item, item number eight, request for additional appropriation expenditure. This comes to us from the Department of Public Works for emergency repair in the City Hall Annex hallway from budgeted funds. Good evening, Mr. Rushlow. Good evening, everyone. Jacob Rushlow, Assistant Director of Public Works for the city. Um, mic's a little hot here. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> This, um, this incident happened back uh, in late February uh, earlier this year during a, a deep freeze uh, part of the winter where a water pipe in the hallway um, connecting City Hall to the old annex burst um, right at, it, it's a uh, fire suppression sprinkler line. Um, stagnant water tends to freeze a little quicker. So when that burst, it caused some um, pretty significant flooding and structural damage to that part of the hallway. We were fortunate enough to have a single restoration um, on call, who had previously done some emergency repairs for the city um, at a couple of facilities at Greenmead as well as at uh, the Department of Public Works complex in our own building. Um, they were able to come out and do the repair uh, fairly quickly and um, completed the repairs in April and um, got us their final invoice here in the, at the end of June. Um, so in accordance with the Livonia Code ordinances, we are uh, bringing this before you as a notification of this emergency and requesting that uh, City Council authorize the payment to Sunglow Restoration Services in the amount of $27,903.55 for all materials, equipment, and labor that was necessary to perform these emergency repairs um, in the annex hallway. Council Member McCullough. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through the chair to Mr. Rushlow, just a quick question. Um, all the numbers seem in order. Um, just going forward, 
I'm assuming you guys beefed up the insulation on these sprinkler heads. So we don't yeah, so this one was interesting. And I, I asked the same question, of course, you know, looking back at what, what caused this, why did this one spot freeze? We hadn't had these issues before and uh, we actually found the, the root cause was when we, when there was a, um, a cable line ramp security system to the camera, when they punctured that and ran it through the outside of the building, either the seal wasn't done well or the seal came dislodged. So there was no seal. It was just cold there blowing right into that part of the building. So we um, have Mr. O'Neill up here. So <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not pointing intriguing. fingers. I'm just explaining our investigation. So we were able to seal that up very nice and tight and caulked and stop that cold air from coming in. So it should not be an issue in the future. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I have, uh, I'd offer an approving for consent. All right. Any comments? Anyone from the audience? Seeing none, we'll move on to item number nine. This is a request to purchase one super jet 1600 high pressure water jetter through the source well purchasing program. This two comes from the Department of Public Works sewer department through budget funds. Mr. Rushlow. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is a new jet truck. It's a scheduled replacement of an outdated jet truck that we use uh, regularly in, in the department um, for in, by the sewer division for routine preventative maintenance and cleaning of our sewer pipes throughout the city. Um, the old truck is well past its life expectancy. Uh, that'll be disposed of through the auction process. Uh, this purchase will be made through the source well purchasing, purchasing agreement at a discount rate of 5%. Uh, plus, we're able to take advantage of some additional dealer discounts, um, it, which brings the total almost $40,000 below the list price. Uh, funds were budgeted uh, in, well, I guess we'll say it this way. Funds were proposed for the 2023 fiscal year budget um, in the water and sewer fund. Uh, we anticipate taking this delivery after December 1st, 2022. The reason we're here before you now uh, prior to the next fiscal year is uh, what, what we've been hearing through the vendor and through the industry of trying to get these types of vehicles is they're, they're, there's not many, very many of them on the lot. We're actually getting hold of the last one uh, that's available through this uh, source well agreement. And if we didn't order it now, we'd be about two years out before we're able to, to get our hands on another one. Um, so trying to be proactive and bringing this before you now knowing we would not, in fact, get the vehicle until after December 1 in the new fiscal year, as it is. Um, oh, so the amount, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> so, uh, so it's our recommendation that the department, th uh, from the department that council authorize the appropriation of these funds and an expenditure in the amount of uh, 358,000 from North River Truck and Trailer to purchase uh, this jet truck. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Madam Chair. Uh, Council Member Barr. And I don't have any questions. I think Mr. Rushlow presented it well. I was just pausing to see if anybody else did, but they don't. So I'll offer improving for consent if there's no objection. All right, seeing none, anyone from the audience? All right, Mr. Rushlow, that goes on the consent agenda. And I think you're gonna stay up there for a little while longer. Item number 10 is also comes to us from the DPW for the baseball diamond fencing replacement project from budgeted funds. Yes, thank you. This fence replacement project includes removal and replacement of existing backdrop, uh, backstop, excuse me, and dugout fencing at seven of our ball diamonds, as well as replacement of the players' benches at five of those ball diamonds. The project was publicly bid through Mitten, and bids were opened on July 12, 2022. We had four contractors attend our mandatory pre-bid meeting. Um, only one submitted a bid, and that was received from Nationwide Construction Group. Um, their bid of uh, $148,531.16 was below our project budget of $150,000. Um, we, we had actually first went out for bid for nine locations um, for replacement of backstops. We removed two of those locations to get that bid price down below what we had uh, in budgeted funds to, to stay within the budget. Um, so with that and working with the vendor, it's our recommendation um, that council proceed to award this construction contract to Nationwide Construction Group for all labor materials and equipment necessary to complete the baseball diamond projects as identified in the bid documents in an amount not to exceed $148,531.16 from budgeted funds. Council Member Barr. Just one question, Jacob. You said that there were four, four 
companies that attended the pre-bid meeting, but only one actually bid. Do you have any idea as to why that was? Um, you know, I, I was not at that meeting. I didn't do any follow-up myself. Um, I can certainly check back with uh, with Doug uh, Moore, who handles parks um, maintenance and. It just strikes me as odd. I'm sure. I'm sure it's not odd. There's probably a good reason for it. I'm just curious. Um, yep. I'm glad to hear that it came in lower than what we were expecting. So um, I'll offer under the circumstance I'll offer approving for consent if there's no objection. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Item number 11. This comes to us from the Department of Public Works also for the Civic Center Library atri Atrium Roof Replacement from Budget Funds. Thank you once again. Um, Civic Center Library Atrium Roof is original to the 1986 construction of the Civic Center Library. Um, if you've been in the library lately, you've noticed there are signs of active leaks that have been recognizable for quite some time with trash cans or buckets st strategically placed throughout the atrium to help collect uh, some of the water as it's dripping through the old glass uh, atrium ceiling. So the department to address this had been working with our architect team um, at DLZ and one of the members here, Lori, is in the audience as well. Um, we, we were working with Lori and her team to determine what cost effective solutions do we have for replacing this roof system. We know that an in-kind glass ceiling replacement uh, is gonna be quite a bit more expensive and costly um, and maybe not the best solution for, for the atrium. Um, so we devised a couple different options for, for metal roof type systems. We explored those and reviews, reviewed those both with library staff as well as with the library commission. Um, and through that whole process determined the lowest life cycle cost. Roof system would be a structural metal roofing um, system with insulation, finished interior ceiling, and new high efficiency LED lighting to, um, to really brighten up that space. Um, and, and really that also solves some of the problems they have now with relying a lot on daylight, as if it's a dim, gloomy day or an evening event, there's not enough light coming through and the ceiling light that's there now doesn't really provide enough light to properly um, illuminate that space. So the new high efficiency LED lighting would be a big plus uh, in that regard. Mm -hmm. So in order to proceed with the design and bidding uh, of this project, um, we prepared an RFP, sent it out to our four architects, as you're familiar with the process that we do regularly for these types of projects, and DLZ um, submitted the lowest fee proposal for the design services. Um, so it's our recommendation to move forward with the design and uh, bidding of this project to award the professional architectural services um, contract supplement to DLZ uh, through the previous QBS process that was approved by council back um, in 2020 and um, approve the funds in an amount not to exceed $75,000 for those uh, services. We would also need to request that council approve an additional appropriation and expenditure of that same amount, 75,000 from the unexpended fund balance of the library fund to cover those costs. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Council Member McCullough. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through the chair to Mr. Rushlow. Um, <clears throat> looking at this, um, like I said, the uh, previous meeting, um, we attended the Library Commission. There was a, thing, a lot of things brought up. So I kind of, I know Council Member Donovic and myself kind of heard Cliff Notes version. I think this is wonderful. I think this is a good opportunity, especially for that library facility. The one question, I know this is probably going into the design and, and bid phase, but maybe just a recommendation if it's possible is try to design this thing because if I'm not mistaken, that roof faces south, doesn't it? It's a perfect opportunity potentially for a solar option, at least to maybe build it with the, the potential to house them. You know, there's enough grants and everything that are out there. And uh, that might be a nice feature to pair it with the LEDs to take some, uh, some electricity off the grid to save some funds. I do think it's a great thing. I know that uh, the, the library itself and the patrons will be very happy not to have the Home Depot buckets. So um, looking forward to seeing this design process. Um, if there are no objections, I will be happy to offer an approving for consent. Uh, Council Member Morgan. Yes, I, I have a question. Is there a warranty on this roof? How long does this thing last and what is our? On the, uh, the one that's proposed? Yes. So when the new roof's installed with these metal uh, roof systems, they're usually around a 40 year life expectancy. And if something comes up in between that, where we have some issues like we're currently having now, is that covered under that? Uh, there, there is a manufactured warranty on that system as well that would be covered, yes. 
Okay, for are we talking parts or them to re come and repair it? You know, it, it depends. I mean, there's there's a manufacturer warranty that's going to be on the product, and then there's also um, many, not just manufacturer defects, but also labor, um, how it was built, um, the quality of the work that was done. So there's two different things in play. We have the um, maintenance guarantee bond that's required by the contract for the contractor, as well as the, the manufacturer's warranty on the actual product. And how do, how long does that go by the, the the people who are installing it? The maintenance guarantee bond is typically a one-year warranty for their quality of work. Um, that's one year from when we ex finish and accept the project. The manufacturer's warranty on material defect is much longer. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair? Uh, yes, Council Member McCullough. Just to clarify, now this is just an appropriation for the design and construction documents. So yes. You know, taking that, taking Council Member Morgan's uh, words into consideration, making sure that whatever you guys do, spec carries a long warranty for the metal standing seam yep. and hopefully can hold solar panels. All right. Offered on consent. Thank you. All right. Uh, finally, item number 12 award of bid. This too from the Department of Public Works for the Carl Sandburg roof replacement from the unex unexpected fund balance of the library fund. Yes, thank you once again. And this is my final item for the evening. Um, Sandburg library roof currently consists of a coal tar pitch roof system that's nearing the end of its serviceable life and is in need of replacement. The construction contract for the roof replacement was publicly bid through the mitten process and bids were opened on August 9th. We had two bids that were received and KJP roofing was the lowest qualified bidder. Um, I guess I should mention, I mentioned the existing system. The, the new system that would be put in would be a, um, uh, a seamless membrane system um, with new flashing and details on all the edging for, um, for a new watertight uh, system. Um, their bid for that work was $243,500. That includes a 25-year warranty. Um, and we did add a $5,000 permit allowance uh, to that amount as well. Um, this was below both the design architect's opinion of construction costs as well as our budget. Um, so we are recommending adding a 10% contingency to the expenditure uh, just to handle any unknowns that may have occurred during construction through change orders um, that may arise. So it's our recommendation um, that council proceed to award a construction contract to KJP Roofing for all labor, labor materials and equipment necessary to complete the Carl Sandburg roof replacement as identified in the bid documents in an amount not to exceed $267,350 uh, from budgeted funds. Councilman McCullough. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through the chair to Mr. Rushlow, do you happen to know the spec on the membrane or what mill um, and product? Um, he, if not, is it something that, you yeah, know? Yeah, I, I can get it to you for sure. Let me see if I have it real quick in my notes. Um, With a 25, I got to think it's at least a 60 or 50, I think 60. We, I'm even trying to remember if we spec this one as PVC or TPO, but okay. it was one of the two. Um, but I know we did, so we did give the option in the spec for a 20 or a 25 year I seen that you took the 25, which is good. Opted for the 25. Yeah. Um, I, I'd have to get back to you. I, I can check no, on that. No, that's fine. On like the, I said, everything seems in order. Is this something that you're looking to get done this, hopefully, if approved right away? It would be, yes, this Awesome. Um, and then there was one, just one comment is, it always gets missed up, but it shows that it's the replacement of the rigid insulation, which adds our value, saving more energy costs for the library going forward, which is a good thing. Uh, everything seems in order. I'll offer an approving on consent, just for purposes. If you could just let me know just for. Yep. For sure. Be great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? I'm going to ask uh, Councilmember McCullough that that be taken off consent. Um, we've had a lot of discussions in in Livonia Vision 21 about the direction of our libraries, and and I'm never going to argue against expenditures, right, when they're needed to preserve buildings and and the contents of the buildings. But um, I would like to go back and look at Livonia Vision 21 and review some of our discussions on the planned future of that library. Yeah, I, I could get behind that. I know we do have the uh, the subject matter of commit, uh, 
in infrastructure, we just yep, bring up. We, we do. So okay. um, I have no objections to it. I, I just, I'd like it to go on consent. And we'll, we'll May I ask Ms. Russell one last question? Off of consent, off of consent. I got one further question for Mr. Russell, Please. if that's all right, through the chair. Um, with this, I mean, obviously we'll schedule the meeting pretty quick. Is that detrimental to the timing? I know we're approaching August with getting the roof done or? With know. the, or do you mean just putting on regular? You know, I, I don't think so because we still have to, even if it's on consent, we have to wait okay. to get the contract signed until after that. Um, and in, it, I just looked at my notes too, and I don't wanna uh, misspeak, but directly to your question when you asked when it would be done, we did allow for a total of six months construction time. So this could carry into- So it could carry over into next year. And quarter. if we did, it would probably something mechanically- Well, you just hold it because this is something where they bring it in and get it done in a week in theory. So, okay, cool. I just wanna make sure we're not holding anything up. Yep, should be good. Sounds good. Yeah, because they still need, we still have to vote on it. Right? Correct. Either way. Yep. All right, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Rushlow. You're welcome, thank you. Now we turn our attention to the engineering department. Item number 13 is a request to accept stormwater facilities maintenance agreement coming to us from the engineering division from Livonia West Commerce Center 2 LLC in conjunction with the construction of a storm drain system that provides adequate drainage for the property developed east of Haggerty Road south of Schoolcraft Road in the N one half section, north half section of section 30 and the address is 13100 Eccles. Mr. Zelensic. Thank you, Madam President, for saving the best for last. I just Absolutely. wanted to let you know, uh, this is a housekeeping issue. The last parcel out at Ammerheim and Eccles that was developed, uh, we're just looking to get your approval for stormwater maintenance now that it is complete and it's been reviewed by our as built mm -hmm. and I look forward to your approval so we can send it on to Wayne County for um, recording. Thank you. Council? Madam Chair. Uh, Councilman Barr. I will offer approving for consent if there's no objection. All right. I see no objections from anyone, anyone here in the audience. Item number 14, a request to accept stormwater facilities maintenance agreement. This comes to us from the engineering division for Livonia West Commerce Center 2 LLC in conjunction with the construction of a storm drainage system that provides adequate drainage for the property developed east of east of Haggerty Road, south of Schoolcraft Road, and the north half section of Section 30, and this is 12950 Eccles. Again, this is the parcel from Ashley Capital uh, that was uh, done at the corner of Eccles and Ammerheim. The same thing, just looking to finally accept the stormwater agreement, hopefully uh, throughout the course of the uh, future years, they'll maintain it. If not, it gives us the opportunity to go on the property and take care of it and then build a property owner. But um, as far as Past history, we've had no issues, so looking forward to continued, uh, uh, you know, f uh, expertise as far as continuing with them, doing their own maintenance, and uh, uh, getting this back uh, to them, sign the sign execute agreement, and recorded at Wayne County. Thank you. Council, Council Member Council Member Morgan. Yeah, I'll offer an approving for consent. All right. Any objections? Any discussion from anyone here in the audience? Seeing none. Item number 15, request for consideration of a proposed ordinance amendment. This comes to us from the engineering division to add chapter 20, to, to add, to add chapter 22, stormwater management to title 13 of the Livonia Court of Ordinances as amended. Thank you, Madam President and city council members. This has been a long time coming. As you know, Wayne County adopted the stormwater ordinance back on September of 2021. And as part of that, uh, Adoption. They were looking for communities to ensure for their MS4 permit, which allows uh, cities and communities to discharge their stormwater into um, uh, the creeks and streams for us to have a, a ordinance on place. Uh, with that, um, Doug Moore with ARC worked hand in hand uh, with their uh, folks to help us uh, provide a template, which uh, appreciate uh, Mike Fisher doing the heavy lifting, to provide this ordinance to the city. As you know, it's complicated. Um, issue with stormwater. Uh, some some stormwater uh, lines are under our jurisdiction that were relinquished from Wayne County back in the 1980s and previous years, and some are under their jurisdiction. So when an when a, when a area is developed or redeveloped, uh, typically we request them to go to Wayne County first to determine if, if it's under their jurisdiction, in which they issued a M permit uh, for the stormwater um, uh, design. If not, some that are under our jurisdiction, we have a standard template 
for agreement that we, we bring to you, such as was, was, which was done for, uh, I think, uh, the previous items. But again, the, the whole goal is to make sure that uh, we have an exhibit that shows where the stormwater uh, facilities are at, that they are maintained. If not, that we have the ability to go on that property to do that work. And obviously, the other part of this ordinance is to make sure that they don't elicit discharge sediment into our lakes and streams and creeks, because obviously, uh, we want to make sure we have maintained stormwater quality in our in our uh, uh, areas. We want to make sure there's no log jams, reduce the log jams, reduce the erosion in our city. Obviously, it's important for us to protect our residents' homes and, and the water fares throughout the city. So with us detaining, treating, and then restricting the outfall of that stormwater, as you saw in Texas, unfortunately, they had a thousand year storm there. And I, I feel really bad for those folks out in Texas that have nine inches of rain within an hour, a um, thousand year flood. But we do our part, you know, when a, when a parcel comes in for redevelopment or a new subdivision comes in for development that we make sure we maintain a detention or underground detention and then it's restricted into either the county drain or the city drain. So this ordinance will now shore up uh, that requirement and give kind of um, uh, examples and guidelines for that along with making sure we meet our MS4 permit that uh, Ms. Gabriel has been working tirelessly on to get approval through EGLE so that we can uh, have a MS4 permit approved along with the stormwater ordinance. And I would ask in the future, if it does get approved, that we can do the emergency um, an action if possible to help get it back to Eagle so that we are uh, in good compliance with them as obviously we've been taking time to get to the right uh, ordinance with the help of Mr. Fisher and the law department. Appreciate all their efforts. Before I go to council, I just want to ask Mr. Zlinster to, call, to um, so will you please just, um, for, for those people who aren't f familiar with the ac acronym, um, tell us what EGLE is, and, and that's E-G-L-E. Yes, EGLE. Uh, so EGLE is the Environment of Great Lakes and Environment, or Energy, um, and obviously the before they were the MD MDEQ, Mission Department of Environmental Quality. And when uh, Gretchen Whitmer took over as governor, she changed that uh, name to in the uh, Michigan in Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy uh, department. Thank you, but it's still a Michigan, it's still Under a Michigan 40, state agency geez. which has jurisdiction over us and our environmental. That is correct. We okay. want to follow, follow, make sure we're in compliance. Thank you. I just wanted to Thank you. clarify that. And um, one other thing, when you ask for emergency provisions, are you talking about an exit X item for an agenda or? Just the uh, reading for a second and possibly, Got it. Uh, you know what I mean, uh, expediting the readings if possible. Got again, it. I'm not, I just, Understood. I know it's, it's been took a long time to get to this point and I, and again, I can't emphasize the effort behind the law department to get to this point. So appreciate your efforts. All right. To move that along. Okay, thank you. We had a question. Yes, Sharon. please. Mr. First Warner. of all, Todd, thank you for that explanation. I have read through a good portion of this and tried to follow what's going on and your explanation there helped clear up a number of things for me. One question I have, um, and there's a lot here, so I, I'm not necessarily looking to, hopefully this isn't too painful to ask, but from what I can gather, a lot of what, it, it appears that a, a lot of what this ordinance is doing is giving us power to regulate things that if we don't do this, the county would regulate. Is that an accurate assessment or am I misreading that? I, I think it's always been out there. Stormwater ordinance has been in effect since 2007. I think some people had opportunity to adopt it back way back when or, and, and some people um, just chose to use the Wayne County ordinance. We were, we were kind of unique because we have two separate jurisdictions, right? Most people are townships like Kent or Northville Township where they would just adopt the stormwater ordinance from Wayne County. We, we have to be uh, walk a tightrope here, right? We wanna make sure we, we wanna follow the Wayne County ordinance, but also understand that some are under our jurisdiction. And our, our goal is to just, one, be in compliance with EGLE, two, make sure that we have the proper permits in order through Wayne County, if, if it's under their jurisdiction through the M permit, or our standard agreement that we have that we bring to city council and three, if they do not follow the law, then we would work with the, fish, make, or the law department to do a $500 fi, uh, you know, violation fine or 90 days in jail for people that may not take you know, heed to the, the uh, t tent of this is to make sure that, again, we're trying to improve the water quality throughout our city. The, the template for this, you mentioned the template for this law language, is that provided by Eagle or is that? Uh, we by? worked with ARC and Doug Moore worked with uh, Annette over there to help us get us some languages or some examples to utilize to streamline this template uh, that would fit our, our mold. Um, so I, again, the being a partner with ARC helped us try to get this ordinance in place, but refine it for our, our community, which again is unique. And explain to me again what the reason is that you're requesting the emergency clause when we get to that point. 
again, th this was requested probably back in March, and it just it's taken this much time to get to do, you know, all the changes in the ordinance itself. And they requested it a long time ago. And, and as you know, with everything going on, we were trying to wait till Wayne County approved theirs back in September and see how it would play out for other communities. And again, we worked with ARC to get a template um, in March and then get to this point where we're at today. Um, and so just to make sure I'm clear on the procedure, uh, the emergency clause, I believe, is when we would offer this for first reading that enables us to offer for yes. second reading right away, right? Yes. Okay. All right, thanks for answering those questions. I'll uh, offer this, well, I guess it won't be for consent because it's an ordinance amendment, but I'll right. for approving. All right. Thank you. Any discussion? Council, audience? All right, this time we go back to the audience. If there's anyone in the audience who would like to communicate with the council on any item not on this evening's agenda, now is an opportunity to do so. If not, we are adjourned as of 8.53. Thank you, Livonia. Good night. And uh, thank you, Livonia TV, as always, for an outstanding job. Good night, uh, Council Member Donovic. Stay safe.